My name is Khadija Anderson, and I'm a manager at Blackstone Technology Group, leading a team of DevOps engineers who support a complex platform with over 20 applications. What to do when your foundation fails you? Disaster recovery and contingency planning for platforms. Now, how many of you have had an unplanned outage in the last month? How many of you had a disaster recovery plan in place to address this unplanned outage? Turns out a DR plan is pretty important, right? Well, let's start with what a DR environment is. It's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. If there's a disaster like a hurricane, a fire, or even a meteor crashing into your primary data center, this environment is intended to help you recover your platform, applications, and data. It's your backup environment. Now here's what a platform might look like with a DR environment. You have your web tier and database tier and your live production environment, and you have the same thing in your disaster recovery environment, just on a smaller scale. You could also have a proxy server or a redirect server to determine where you want to send your request to. Great, so now you have a backup environment, but what's next? What do you do? Where do you start? Who do you contact? Well, this is where contingency planning comes in handy. Unfortunately, winging it doesn't work so well in situations like this. I recommend implementing a regular contingency exercise to test your failover procedure. This could be done quarterly, every six months, or annually. The purpose is to test the viability of your failover procedure, so just make sure the exercise closely mirrors what the process would look like in the event of a real disaster. For this exercise, you should start by determining roles and responsibilities. Who's on the recovery team? Who's leading the exercise? Who's going to notify the appropriate parties that this exercise is happening? Who's responsible for documentation? Set a recovery time objective. What is the maximum acceptable length of time that your platform can be offline? For some, this may already be predetermined by your stakeholders by what's called a service level objective or a service level agreement. You could also set a failure rate or threshold for when to actually fail over. For example, if requests are taking longer than 45 seconds, automatically send the request to the secondary data center. You could also automatically send half of the traffic to the secondary data center if requests are taking over a certain length of time. Next, document the step-by-step -step process for your failover procedure. This could be done, uh, excuse me, your, all of your tasks must be specific. Document who will be doing which steps and the estimated time to complete each step. For your contingency exercise, there may be some preliminary steps that need to be performed. For example, temporarily increasing the resources in your DR environment, checking your DR hardware to ensure things are functioning properly, and notifying the appropriate parties that the exercise will begin soon. Now, it's time to redirect the traffic. Generally, the web requests that come in are directed to your secondary data center, for your, excuse me, to your primary data center. For this exercise, you would direct those requests to your secondary data center to actually fail over. Again, this can be done through the use of a proxy server or a redirect server. Now it's time to validate that the failover was successful. The recovery team should check to make sure that all functionality is working as expected. Stakeholders should perform regression testing to ensure that the switch was successful from a user perspective. Once testing is completed, it's time to fail back to your primary data center. Remember, this is just an exercise, so you'll want to fail back sooner rather than later. In the event of a real disaster, you would remain in the secondary data center until the primary is back up. Again, test, test, test. The recovery team should again test to make sure that the fail back was successful. The stakeholders should also again test to verify that the fail back was successful from a user perspective. Now, a lot of these steps can be automated, or at least plan ahead of time. This will help to save time, ensure your process is repeatable, and increase efficiency each time the exercise is performed. If you have several applications on your platform, I recommend performing an internal contingency exercise with your team first, prior to looping in the stakeholders. This will help you to test out your failover procedure and adjust if necessary prior to the full exercise. You can choose one, or two applications on your platform to go through this internal exercise. Say you host Amazon or Target, for example. You would still go through every step in the process, just on a smaller scale. And finally, I can't stress this enough. Document, document, document. Documentation might not be the most fun, but this must be a repeatable and hopefully painless process. So it's an absolute necessity to document every step along the way. If you have any questions on what I presented or if you would like to discuss this further, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Khadija Anderson. Thank you. All right.
right. Now for the moment, I, I think Ignite Karaoke is like the donut of conference speaking. <laughs> you know, it's short and 